we are picking up the reading of Bradford's History of Plymouth Plantation in its first chapter. And here we have reached the 7th of December, 1620. The pilgrims and the Mayflower have not actually landed yet. They're still off the coast of New England, just around Cape Cod. And they have been exploring on land, a, a landing party, using a, a boat they call a shallop. And while they were there, they've had already violent encounters with the people who have been there before them. So we pick it up today, the day after their first battle. After some hours sailing, it began to snow and rain, and about the middle of the afternoon, the wind increased and the sea became very rough, and they broke their rudder, and it was as much as two men could do to steer her with a couple of oars. But their pilot bade them be of good cheer, for he saw the harbor. But the storm increasing and the night drawing on, they bore what sail they could to get in while they could see. But herewith they broke their mast in three pieces, and the sail fell overboard in a very grown sea, so as they'd like to have been cast away. Yet, by God's mercy, they recovered themselves, and having the flood with them, struck into the harbor. But when it came to, the pilot was deceived in the place and said, The Lord be merciful unto them, for his eyes never saw that place before. And he and the master mate would have run her ashore in a cove full of breakers before the wind. But a lusty seaman which steered bade those which rode, if they were men, about with her, or else they would all be cast away, the which they did with speed. So he bid them be of good cheer and row lustily, for there was a fair sound before them, and he doubted not but they should find one place or other where they might ride in safety. And though it was very dark and rained sore, Yet, in the end, they got under the lee of a small island and remained there all that night in safety. But they knew not this to be an island till morning, but were divided in their minds. Some would keep the boat for fear they might be amongst the Indians. Others were so weak and could, they could not endure, but got ashore and with I don't, I'm going to have to start this sentence again. Um, again, we're used to, I'm used to reading the more courtly language that we've heard uh, in other writers. In this, this is a, uh, a very plain speech in its way. Uh, plain, but at the same time, archaic. Um, a lot of the words have been stumbling over. It, it has to do with spelling or that the words are um, jammed together when we're used to seeing them apart or apart when we're used to seeing them jammed, to, jammed together. Things like thereto and heretofore and wherewithal, words this guy loved. Um, so I've taken us off on a really pointless tangent. Let me get back. Um, but they knew not this to be an island till morning, but were divided in their minds. Some would keep the boat for fear that they might be amongst the Indians. Others were so weak and could, they could not endure, but got ashore and with much ado got fire, all things being so wet. And the rest were glad to come to them. For after midnight, the wind shifted to the northwest and it froze hard. But though this had been a day and night of much trouble and danger unto them, 
Yet God gave them a morning of comfort and refreshing, as usually he doth to his children. For the next day was a fair sun-shining day, and they found themselves to be on an island secure from the Indians, where they might dry their stuff, fix their pieces, and rest themselves, and gave God thanks for his mercies and their manifold deliverances. And this being the last day of the week, they prepared there to keep the Sabbath. On Monday, they sounded the harbor and found it fit for shipping and marched into the island and found diverse cornfields and little running brooks, a place as they supposed fit for situation. At least it was the best they could find and the season and their present necessity made them glad to accept of it. So they returned to the ship again with this news to the rest of their people, which did much comfort their hearts.